crying? Sorry. <clears throat> I can't help it. Olympic stories are, are the most inspirational. It's not the athletes, it's the format. Anyone's story would be inspirational if you do the Olympic style. Yeah. We're both so jaded. <laughs> Olympic achievement is the most inspirational there is, period. Man, I gotta tell you guys, they just, they do not put man-sized portions of fruit on the bottom of these. Do you know a cowboy story? No. What story are we talking about? It was in Steeltown, Pittsburgh, PA, that a young boy's Olympic dreams were born. As a competitor, not a cameraman. When I was 11, I, I watched Eric Hyde and speed skate at the 1980 Olympics. And, you know, his body just in perfect harmony, powerful thighs propelling him to gold. It just spoke to me. Bruce was going to be an Olympic speed skater. It would be a difficult path. Well, you know, as you might imagine, the other kids, you know, they didn't exactly give me a pat on the back. I would say more like a kick to the keister. There were metaphorical kicks, too. Hey, dorkwad. That nice bodysuit, Gumby. Uh, oh, one was, uh, hey, is it hard to skate when you got to d up your ass? And the last one was me. But uh, look, I'm his older sister. It's what you did. But Bruce persevered. He got better and better and attracted attention. I got a letter inviting me to try out for the U.S. junior team. And to celebrate, my mom gave me some money to go rent a movie. Little did Bruce's mom know, that movie selection would alter her son's life forever. I'm in the video store, and I got Police Academy in hand. I'm ready to check out. Walking up to the front, and I noticed Porky's is on the top shelf. You know, puberty hit me pretty hard that year, so of course, I wanted to see it. But it was way up there, I couldn't reach, so I stepped up on one of the shelves to get it. Oof, boy. Torn ACL, shattered elbow. You know, I don't know why I couldn't have been satisfied with Steve Gutenberg's charm and Michael Winslow's hilarious voice noises, but... It was Porky's, man. After receiving his GED, Bruce moved to where the ice wasn't. I settled in Miami Beach. I, I, I was pretty directionless in life, even for Miami Beach standards. And that's saying something. But that all changed when I met Charlie. I was a local broadcaster from Pittsburgh in town for a Dolphins game. This kid was serving us margaritas. I thought he looked familiar. He, uh, he remembered hearing about my story. I told Bruce, just because you can't compete doesn't mean you can't be involved. Simple words, but it ignited something in me. As it turned out, my cameraman needed an assistant, and, uh, and Bruce needed a lifeline. And so began a new journey. Instead of the U.S. junior team, it was ESPN that noticed the video cowboy, as Bruce had begun calling himself. I started covering sports all over the globe. But there was one event that Bruce still hadn't covered. That would all change in 2002, the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. Speed skating, men's 1500 meters. My dream a lifetime ago. Apollo Ono won the event, but he wasn't the only person to take home gold. I felt like a winner. The block of ice that had formed around my heart had finally melted and reformed out on the ice where it belonged. You know, out there with the other ice. 